the way I felt to go for this service. And we're going to read from a translation today, the Holman Christian Standard Bible. And I chose this translation because my current professor was one of the translators on the team. And so I'm going to tell him tomorrow that I opened the service from the Bible that you worked on because we want to connect in every way that we can. And he knows like 15 languages, and so I'm sure he was very well qualified for the job. But it is so good to be here. Stand, and we're going to read Psalm 149. Psalm 149 in the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. That's us, right? His saints, some other translations say. Let Israel celebrate its maker. There is a maker, Brother Josh. He was talking about that in Sunday school today. There is a maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king, and he is the king. Let them praise his name with dancing. And make music to him with tambourine and lyre, with bass guitars and drum sets and electronic keyboards and organs. For Yahweh takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly celebrate in triumphal glory. Right now, you can celebrate in triumphant glory glory let them shout for joy on their beds and i know that's a little bit awkward there but you're laying in bed in peace because you've got the victory because the king of kings and lord of lords and your maker he's got it all in control and he's already won the victory let the exaltation of god be in their mouths and the double-edged sword in their hands inflicting vengeance on the nation's And punishment on the peoples. Think of this spiritually, folks. Binding their kings with chains and their dignitaries with iron shackles. God has given us authority. Carrying out the judgment decreed against them. Who has God decreed judgment over? The enemies, the spiritual enemies. And he's already won the victory. The honor is for who? It's for all his godly people. We all get to participate in this together in exalting the Lord and enjoying the peace and the fellowship of the victory, the victory that God has already won in Christ. Hallelujah. God, we welcome you into this place today. We want to enter into your praise. We want to be uninhibited in our worship because you are worthy, God. You've made the world and you put us in it. You've shined your light into the darkness and you have given us your salvation salvation our joy is full we celebrate you today we worship you in song we worship you with raised hands oh we worship you with our lips oh god oh you're worthy jesus we give ourselves to you today come and enter in enter in oh god be pleased be pleased be pleased oh god with your wor- the worship of your people in Jesus name open the eyes of the night there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God. God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Out 
149 the scripture that we read before service it talks about the power that you have over the enemy and what is it talking about it's talking about your praise that the praise of God it's your weapon God will bring victory the shackles that are on you will fall and they will go and boomerang back to the enemy that will be bound with shackles and fetters when we will rejoice in the God of our salvation. He's already given us the victory. The victory is in Him. And your worship, your worship, it's breaking down strongholds. Hallelujah. Your worship today, it's powerful. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Take your sword out. The sword of your praise. Hallelujah. If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Yeah. 
Hallelujah. You are great. Your name is great. You may be seated. This week, I spent some time at the prompting of the Lord to look at the names of God. We were just singing about the names of God. It's the name above all names. And the Bible is giving us just a revelation of God by his names. Starting with, I am that I am. He's that self-existent one. He's so good. I, I started studying the names of God today. And it is God. It's God. God is extending himself to us. From one revelation to another through his name. And the amazing thing about it all, if you start looking at all those names that God has revealed himself, the provider, the healer, the God who brings wholeness, the God who brings his own righteousness, he extends that to us. Jehovah, the God of hosts, over all the armies, and then Ultimately, as we understand that his name is a revelation of him, his name is a revelation of who he is. And the divine truth revealed to and then revealed by Jesus Christ. And that's why when we say name above all names, why is it the name above all names? It is the current, most recent revelation of what God has done for his people. He came and he took on humanity so that he could pay the price for our sins. The name Jesus is the name above all names because it's that last and current revelation. It's the last and current revelation of God who's come because he loved us so much that he came to bring us back into relationship with him. Him. He is God. His names, I wrote, are like a theological puzzle to reveal the transcendent one to us finite people. But it's always associated with his presence. It's him being here among us. He's the stronghold that we run into. He's our shelter from the storm. Jesus. Jesus, the current revelation of God. He's everything we need. God, our Savior, who came to be with us and poured out what spirit on the whole, in the Pentecost? Is, it's called the, the spirit of Christ, right? He's still with us. He's what's here moving among us. There's one God, one spirit. And it's the spirit of Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior, the Victor, who's come to continue his work through you. I was reading Acts chapter 4, and it talked about how the apostles, they got together and prayed after Pentecost. They got together again and prayed. And they prayed, God, let us speak with boldness. Stretch out your hand. How does Jesus stretch out his hand post-Pentecost? When the people get together and pray, there's a power and it shook the place. And there was great unity and power and demonstration as that same spirit of Christ extended his hand through Peter and Paul and Barnabas and now Teddy and David, Mark. in his name in his name shall all oppression cease his name unites us and empowers us his name is the one that breaks the strongholds and the principalities his name the current revelation of God almighty to you individually and to us as a church aren't you just thankful that you know him and that you know his name God, we thank you. We thank you for revealing yourself to us. 
You came and you brought light into darkness. You are the light of life and you light us. And you've called us to be a city set on a hill, to light this world on your behalf, to continue the work that you began, extending your love, your grace, your goodness, empowering your people, giving them authority over darkness, over the stronghold of sin. You've already won the victory. Thank you, Jesus. And help us now to share that. We're going to stand and pray for our Detroit metro area churches. There's a river. There's a river flowing. If you look to the Bible, it's all about a river because it's not written in chronological order. The river's in heaven already. And the river flows through the whole of God's word and there's a river and a current that's still flowing today and he wants it to flow right here at Detroit the straits of the river in this community in this Detroit metro area Lord we pray together that there would be breakout revival and angelic assistance that will cause the spiritual principalities in this metro area that you have already won the victory over, that you would cause it to step back. God, that you would bring deliverance and freedom and liberty just as you said you came to do when you picked up that Isaiah scroll and you said that this is your mission that you were anointed for this purpose. So God, give us the tools, the plan, the resources, and the wisdom to reach the people in our communities. Unite us and burden us for this great harvest and help us to do our part in discipling this metro region. We pray that you would open doors for Bible studies individually, collectively. Let there be Holy Ghost in fillings, miracles, and divine appointments. Help us see with spiritual eyes the needs of the people near we speak together unlimited anointing and unlimited resources and we pray for strength and encouragement for every pastor every leader every saint give our district leaders favor wisdom and anointing as they lead this new district. And we want to take this time also to pray for Pastor and Sister Walker as they're away. We pray that they would come back to us safe and refreshed as they celebrate Pastor's 75th birthday. We pray, God, that you would be with those that are sick among us, that you would continue to work in Brother Lafferty's life. God, that you would give you wisdom to those who are caring for his needs and speak peace, speak peace. Continue to strengthen those who have been dealing with weakness. I thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your word. At this time, we're going to give. If you have a physical offering that you would like to bring, the ushers are going to put a box and for the tithe and have a basket in the back. If, if you give online, thank you for doing that. Lord, we thank you for the resources that you give to us, your people. You are faithful. Every good and perfect gift comes from you, the Father of lights. And God, I pray that you would continue to bless this church, that we might be a blessing in our community for your kingdom and for your glory in Jesus' name. Follow the, you can, there's no direction. <laughs> That's the old line. Walk yourself back there to that basket, and when we get into the sanctuary, we'll follow the direction of the ushers again. God bless you as you give.
God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. When Christ shall
His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die. I scarce can take it in. That Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Shaya kata haya tata nama baba baka haya lada de kama. Horia ka baba baba shama baka ta haya toka. Shaya kata haya kata tata nama baba baba galoro de kama baba baka shoro de yare. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Minister to your people. Minister to your people today. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God's good. I appreciate the praise and worship team. There are modern day Levites. Amen. I appreciate you all. So. Go have a seat for about 20 or 25 minutes. <laughs> you may be seated. Everybody may be seated. I, I feel the presence of the Lord here today. God's so good just to let us feel. You know, some people live their whole life and go into eternity never, ever feeling the touch of God one time. I know he tries. I know that. He tries to make himself known. I know that. But we got a we got a field that's ready to harvest. I um, want us to uh, pray as they leave us, brother and brother Manoa and sister June. And uh, what's that baby's name? Ariana. Amen. God bless them. I asked them this morning, so you're leaving? They said, yes. I said, was it something I said? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, remember you. We'll never forget you. Come back whenever you can. Amen. All right. Uh, keep praying for Brother Lafferty. Amen. He needs a touch of God, and God's able, and God's going to touch you. Amen. Amen. I uh, I am so glad to see two of my dear friends, been my friends for 30, 35 years, brother and sister Rooney. Just stand up, would you? Brother and sister Rooney. <laughs> Amen. It's good to see you. 
Visit us anytime. You're always welcome. These are dear saints of God and uh, honorable people. Amen. These, uh, these are very special people. In my life, these are very special people. And I thank God. It's good to see them. Amen. I look around. Amen. It's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. You know, um, I sort of had a, I won't call it a vision, just a, maybe an association of an image that came into my mind uh, of either a, uh, either an airport at a gate or else a, a seating area before you board a ship. I just see all these people, you're waiting, you're just waiting there, and uh, you've got your, your boarding pass, and you've, uh, and you've got your luggage, your carry-ons, you went ahead and set on your checked luggage, and you have your, uh, your purse or your little satchel or whatever, with whatever you need, and uh, they're going to call you, and uh, you're going to go on a flight, or you're going to go on a cruise, transatlantic cruise maybe, and you're kind of excited, but you're a little bit, just a little bit apprehensive, just a little. You got butterflies in your stomach, but you're fixing to go on a long, exciting journey maybe that you've looked for, forward to for a long time. I just saw you as that, just a while. And there's some folks standing at the gate in sharp blue, perhaps, uh, uniforms looking really sharp, and maybe a little red hanky in their pocket or scarf and a gold set of wings or a gold anchor or something. But folks, we're going on a journey, and I'm excited. And maybe a few butterflies, but uh, we're going. Amen. Don't be late at the gate. Because guess what? That ship don't turn around. That aircraft, once he's on the takeoff roll, he's gone. He's not going to circle back to get you. We have got to be ready. Amen. Amen. Well, I said all that to say this. Now I'm going to preach about travel tips for your journey to heaven. I don't think I'm, for, am I forgetting anything? Was I supposed to say something? No. Okay. Amen. It's good to see you. And uh, I was thinking, God's been good to me. I preached my first sermon nearly 60 years ago. It'll soon be 60 years ago. And I don't know if I'm any better at it or not. I just don't know. I don't, I don't know how good. Well, Lord, help us. Help me to uh, be under the blood, under the anointing. Amen. And help God help me. Would y'all, let's pray for this situation going on here right now. Lips of clay, hearts, good ground. Brother, Justin Rory, would you lead us in prayer real loud in Jesus' name? Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. All right, you may be seated. <laughs> That's right. Travel tips for your journey to heaven. Planes, trains, boats automobiles, and walking, maybe a motorcycle. But these are various modes of travel, bicycles, amen, scooters. Anytime travel plans are made to first-time destination or unfamiliar location, it, it's always wise to do the research, figure out what you need when you get there so you'll be prepared a lot of places don't use dollar bills. 
As a matter of fact, a lot of places I found out don't lose any kind of cash. You tap your card or you, <laughs> you're out of luck. But it's a good idea to get all the travel tips from one who's already been there. So I watch these people. I was going to the United Kingdom, so I watched these people from the United Kingdom tell me what I ought to do, and they got a lot of travel tips. And it sure helped and opened my eyes. Yes, travel tips, say that ten times real fast, can save a lot of lost time and lost money, inconvenience, and unpleasant surprises. And since we are fellow travelers on our way to heaven, that's what I'm talking about, I'm going to use scripture and some life realities. And so I've compiled a list of a few travel tips. Probably I could come up with 55, but I figured five will do for today. They're the most important. And I call this travel tips for your journey to heaven. So the first tip, first slide, number one, is mind the gap. Mind the gap. That's a funny saying. Play a video about mind the gap back there. They talk funny over there. <laughs> Mind the gap. Those uh, railway stations there in the UK, they have warning signs painted on the floor, on the ramp, and um, it says, Mind the gap. And also, when the train pulls into the station and the doors open, this loud recorded announcement you just heard says, Mind the gap. What does that mean? That's a safety announcement advising passengers to be careful when stepping across the opening between the train and the station platform. It means watch out for the space between that car and that concrete platform you're on because every year about a thousand people sustain a serious injury some have even died. Small kids have fallen down in that gap. And it's about four or five feet down to the concrete floor where the rails are. People have been stuck in there. And one guy got his leg stuck so bad, all the passengers out of the car got out and pushed on the car to tilt it back so the man could free his leg. Some people have, have lost legs and arms. It's serious. And so... Somehow they didn't heed the warning to mind the gap, and uh, they were trapped. It's a common hazard that's associated with railway travel. It's just a part of travel. It's a part of the experience, and uh, you've got to be conscious of it. So whether the person uh, boarding or, or disboarding, deboarding, coming off, the car, whether he's distracted or daydreaming or sh somebody shoved him or he's just unaware, but falling trapped between in that space, that metal car and that concrete platform, that will definitely ruin your trip. It will ruin your day. You're going to have a bad day if you don't mind the gap. Now, these are travel tips to heaven. I took it serious. I looked down. I wanted to make sure that when I made that transition from that platform into that railroad car, I wanted to make sure my foot was firmly planted from to where I was going from where I was coming from. And this is a railroad, planes, trains, boats, cars, automobiles. It's It's... It's somehow we're getting to heaven, and the Lord used different ways. And these are just examples. But on this road to glory, there's many pitfalls. There are many 
traps. Does everybody see where I'm fixing to go? And they're just a part of the journey. I wish they weren't. I wish it was solid, but it's not. The, the, the platform's solid. It doesn't go anywhere. It's been there for, for a long time, but the train is moving. And we all have been in transition at times in our life. We're going from one place, we're going to another. We're going from one mode of transportation to another mode of transportation, and there's always a gap. There's something that lies ahead of us that is a hazard. It's a pitfall, and we need to be conscious of it. We've got to be aware of it. We've got to mind the gap. We've got to be aware of and prepared for transitions in our life as we make our way onto the streets of gold. It's just a part of it, and it's not going to go away. But we've got to be prudent when we make that transition. Ephesians 5 and 15, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Plant your foot wisely. Don't do anything ignorant. Okay? Does that sound southern? Man, that was ignorant. Okay. Proverbs 4, 26, 27, NASB. Watch the path of your feet, and all your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Turn your foot from evil, and by all means, please, mind the gap. Travel tip number two, keep the water out of your boat. There's a picture of a, looks like an old, old schooner, a sailboat. It's a big one, and it's about half sunk. And you can imagine why, Uh, because of water. Because ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that gets in them. And every marine vessel must have what's known as a bilge pump or several bilge pumps. And a bilge pump is a piece of equipment on a boat or a ship that is used to remove water that collects in the bilge or in the inside the bottom of the hull. And there's different reasons why bilge water would accumulate in there, sometimes leaks, sometimes rainwater, sometimes a big storm will throw a big wave and it'll it'll just end up down there. Uh, But if the bilge water in the hull is allowed to rise to a certain level and it's not pumped out, it will eventually sink the ship. You don't want that to happen. And when the sea is calm and the wind is mild and the hull is watertight, there's no threat, no problem. But when the storm rises and the winds blow and start kicking up the waves, as is the case many times in this Christian journey, we find ourselves out on a stormy sea and water that's on the outside, starts making its way on the inside, and it starts to accumulate in our hull, Brother Ozias. <laughs> yes, it does. And uh, then we're in danger of sinking. What I'm saying here is, don't let what's happening around you, outside of you, Get inside of you and weigh you down to the point that you start listing. You've got to get rid of all the bilge that's going to drive you right down to the bottom of the sea. Amen. 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 Oh, Captain Davy Jones Locker. So they call it in pirate language. Philippians 4, 4 through 7. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a process, a spiritual process that we can, we can go through that will get all of that out of our hall so so we won't start listing and start sinking because the more you list the more water can come in so there's there's a way god helps us through that so don't let these things such as anxiety or frustration or anger or bitterness or depression build up and no matter what comes your way you've got to get over it you have to deal with it get some of your brothers and sisters in the Lord together come to church and have a good prayer meeting and and get all that pumped out of your your spirit and out of your soul out of your heart just get get through it do whatever you got to do to keep yourself free from the buildup that just adds weight to you and it's going to take you down. And another form of bilge water that'll, that'll sink you, it comes from the outside. It comes from the world. Uh, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. The Lord somehow in his will did not choose to put us out somewhere on some satellite planet of heaven where there's never any any thing that's negative or temptations or comes against us or the devil's not there. No, he didn't do it until the day we are raptured and we make that final journey. We are here, uh, and the Lord's allowing us to dwell in the middle of all that on this earth. So our lot is to be surrounded on every side by sin and sinners. But don't be overwhelmed. First John 2.15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of the life, it's all just a bunch of bilge. It doesn't belong in there. Somehow it can accumulate in there. So pump it out. Pump it out. Amen. Stay away from it. Got to be watertight to the world. Saints, don't let anything, be it the world, the flesh, the devil, don't let anything accumulate in the hull of your heart to the point it sinks you. We got to make it. We got to make it. Amen. Amen. Travel tip number three. Travel tip. Now look at that. There's a big picture on the bottom, a small picture on top. Anybody know where that is or what that is? The bottom is um, the, the main cabin or whatever of a commercial passenger uh, aircraft, a jet. They're all there and... Uh, the flight attendant is closing the over, overhead hatches and probably trying to find a place for somebody to put their carry-on. And the upper right is what's called first-class seating. And there, there's nobody around, just empty seats. Nobody on, up there, just this lady, traveler. And there is a flight attendant with a black or blue suit and a red tie, and he's handing her... Uh, ginger ale in a stemmed, stemmed uh, <laughs> glassware. And uh, isn't that what you always order? <laughs> I thought I was in a Pentecostal church. <laughs> 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 so, 
So uh, these, uh, these commercial jetliners, they have a, a limited number of premium seats, and these are referred to as first class. Uh, I flew uh, one time, and I was uh, flying in, uh, uh, in, in the main cabin or coach, and one time I says, you know, on a trip back, I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to go to first class. So I paid like 150, 160 bucks and sat up there. And everybody's walking in. I was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyhow, uh, I found out what it was about. It was a little bigger, about that much bigger, <laughs> and probably about that much more <laughs> tow room. And what they did was everybody else got their beverage and their bag of peanuts. And they came through. They gave me my beverage, bag of peanuts, and then they came again with a basket of fruit and, a, and like a basket with chips. So I got a bag of chips and a banana. <laughs> that was an expensive banana, <laughs> 150 bucks. <laughs> Talk inflation. So, but there's other, uh, the, the first class seating, as you see, is, is uh, it's toward the front of the aircraft. They have more space, comfort, uh, service, and privacy. And there's other seats known as coach or economy or main seating. First class comes at a premium price or it's for preferred business travelers. So passengers seated back in the crowded section and they always look forward up to the first class area, and there may be some empty seats. And somebody might get the thought, well, see those, I'm kind of crowded here. This guy, he's like, he's over on my side. And um, I think, since they're empty, I'm just going to slip up there in first class when the flight attendant isn't looking. I'm just going to move up there and take one when they're not looking. Yes, sir. And uh, don't try it. <laughs> You'll end up being embarrassed in front of all the passengers seated in rows 10 through 47. <laughs> Seat upgrades to first class come only under special uh, conditions or by upgrades or by invitation. On this Christian journey, I have some seen some folks that f somehow felt entitled to statuses uh, of which they were not worthy. And uh, I've seen folks usurp authority and try to move themselves up into positions where they did not belong. And promotion in the kingdom of God comes at a very high personal cost of consecration and some people are not wanting to pay the price amen but they want to sit up in those high seats and uh, Jesus taught about people who get the big head or get too big for their britches and Luke 14 7 through 11 Luke 14 7 and he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they sh chose out the chief room, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to come to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come, say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. And when he that bade thee cometh, he may say to thee, Friend, go up higher. Then thou shalt have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And though where you're seated might be really crowded, be happy that you're getting to travel and be patient in the cabin and seat 
that matches the price of the ticket you paid for. Stay humble and in God's time. If it's his will for you, you will be promoted. Amen. Number four, four out of five. It's worth the walk. Travel tip number four, it's worth the walk. There is a, um, a black top pavement or concrete, and it walks a long, long way, and right in the very center of the of the frame of that slide. Can't see it well, but there's a magnificent stone palace, Blenheim Palace in Woodstock, England. It is the family home of Winston Churchill. Now, the bus stop uh, was outside the gate, and we had to walk a little ways from the bus stop in the gate, and I stood there, and I looked at that. I says, I have to walk there. If this was Disney World, there would have been trams leaving every 10 minutes from the bus stop, dropping you off at the gate, which is about three-quarter of a mile down the road. But this wasn't Disney World, and I had to walk, and walk I did. And my feet hurt when I got there. But it was worth the walk. Um, It was our destination. Heaven sometimes might seem so far away, but keep walking, keep walking. Don't s turn around and say, forget it. It's more than I bargained for. The road to heaven is a long road. And the journey on the straight and narrow way can really get wearisome, but it's worth the walk. Galatians 6 and 9 and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord and keep walking shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Put that number four slide back up. In the lower left, seated in a throne with a crown on his head, is yours truly. That was inside of one of the rooms behind me, if I zoomed out, or, uh, is a magnificent pipe organ. <laughs> that place was, it would just knock your eyes out. But, uh, and I thought about that when Justin took my picture. I thought, you know, isn't it isn't he going to heaven just like that? <laughs> that long, long walk and finally you get to sit down. And uh, they put a crown on your head. Folks, it is worth it. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Here's a little poem by Ann Peterson. I told the Lord my journey is long. He said, I chose the length. I told him, but I'm faint and weak. He said, I'll give you strength. No matter what my words, God heard while listening patiently. But what has meant the most is this. My father walks with me. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. It's worth the walk. And you're going to be there someday. And when you get there, you're going to say, that wasn't so bad. Amen? Amen? Let's move on. Travel tip number five, proof of citizenship. If you're planning international travel by land, sea, or air, there's one document that is more important than any other document that you could carry on your person, and that's called a passport. Passport is an official governmental document that contains a person's identity, such as individual full name, a photograph, place and date of birth, nationality, signature, and the expiration date. And uh, you may be a citizen of the United States, and you may leave the United States, 
but when it comes time to come back into the country, you cannot re-enter without a valid passport. Amen? Amen? All right. In many countries, as we were, we were in, Is in Israel, we were in England, and we moved freely. Nobody checked our identity. I kept it on me just in case, but nobody carded me. Let me see your passport. But when it came time and we landed in Detroit and faced those custom guards for the DJ and the TSA people, uh, they wanted to know one thing. Where's your passport? And the picture on the passport had to match this mug. And then they let me in, and I was so glad. And if I wouldn't have had it, I could have fussed and cussed and cried and everything and say, well, look at this, and I'm this, and, and so forth. <laughs> You've got to have a passport. And when it comes to heaven, we are not foreigners. We're citizens of New Jerusalem. In Ephesians 2, 19, Now therefore you're no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. And if you want to enter that city where the Lamb is the light, your name must be recorded in the book of life. Let's read Revelation 21 and 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of nations into it. And there shall no, in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Heaven has a gate. It has a border. And in that day, there will be many people, Jesus said, will come up and say, Lord, let me in. I deserve it. I belong here. And, uh, well, tell me your identity. Well, I did this, and I did that, and I prophesied, and I did that, and I gave him the collection plate, and, and, um, and I taught prophecy class, and, and uh, Sarah, come on up. And uh, uh, so I belong here. He, let me see your ID. Well, well, I don't have it. And he'll say, depart from me. I know you not. I tell you what, do you have your passport? We're headed for heaven. Do you have your passport? And if you don't, today is your day. Today is your day. You can have that identification that identifies you with a city called heaven. You can have your name in the Lamb's book of life. I tell you, two weeks ago, when I stood before the custom agent, I was so glad I had my passport. I didn't want to go through the consequences of not having it. And there's nothing, church, nothing as valuable and as important as having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Let's stand. Lord Jesus, Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Because you've made a way, Lord. You have provided, provided everything we need for this journey, Lord. And we just say right now in Jesus' name, Lord. You would help us, God. We have travel tips from the Bible to help us with, to answer every question that we might have. Help us through any problem that we would have. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, did you help us, Lord. In Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you my heart. Pray.
praise God you alone every breath that I take. Oh God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. I wonder if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that when I was going down the list, if there's any one of those items that I mentioned that perhaps something was raised in, raised to a point of awareness and and brought your focus to it and say, you know, I'm falling short there. If there's anyone in here, and I'm going to ask for all the saints that would to come, would come. And if there's anyone in here as far as having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I believe in the Book of Acts. It makes it very clear of what it takes. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 38, there was a question raised by the people that heard that great uh, message that Peter preached and witnessed the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And they said, what should we do? We know something's lacking. What do we need to do? And Peter gave them the answer. And this is the way he responded. He said, repent, repent of your sins, turn your back on your sins and start walking in a road of righteousness and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. To be baptized means to be immersed in water and have the minister call the name of the Lord Jesus Christ invoking the name of Jesus Christ over you in the waters of baptism and that will wash away your sins it'll apply the name of Jesus to you it'll apply the blood of Jesus to your heart it will cover you and it'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life and you shall he said you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost it's a promise you'll receive the gift of Holy Ghost. And when you do, you will speak in a heavenly language. You'll speak in a foreign language that you did not learn. Amen. And the Lord will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And then you can be sure, Lord, I have a witness. I have a witness. I have a witness. I know I'm saved. I know my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Is there anyone today, if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, you may have been baptized in the titles of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. That's the Roman baptism. But if you want the day of Pentecost, Jerusalem baptism, you must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that we can take care of that today. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to be worth it. 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 happy day. Yes, it is. It's going to be worth every long mile, every heartache and every trial. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to be worth it. all so beautiful. Happy day. It's gonna be worth it all. It's gonna be worth it all. It's gonna be worth it all. Some beautiful happy day. It's gonna be worth every long mile, every heartache, and every child. It's gonna be worth it all. Some beautiful happy day.
happy day. be worth it all. the presence of God to come in. Worship is exalting the presence of God. When you have a situation in your life, when you're dealing with some stuff, you need to step out of praise and move into worship. What we're going to do here for a few minutes is let's let some of the old-time apostolic methods that we know play out before us. If you're dealing with a struggle and a trial, we all have something, amen? I want you to find somebody Take them by the hand, and let's sing this song as a testament of worship. 
it's going to be worth it all. I've got some stuff here, but it's going to be worth it. I'm dealing with some junk here, but it's going to be worth it. i got some mess in my life, but it's going to be worth it because God is going to see me through. Right now, I'm going to move out of praise, and I'm going to step into worship because it's going to be worth what I'm dealing with today. Let's do this again. Come on. Take somebody's hand. I know what he's done for me. going to do something a little different okay we've worshiped God for what he's done we've worshiped God for who he is now we're going to step out in faith we're going to worship God for who he's going to be now we thank God for what he's brought us through we've worshiped God for where we're at right now but now we're going to worship God for what he's going to be tomorrow God I know that I've got some mess but you're still going to be God tomorrow God I know I got some junk but you're going to be God tomorrow God, I know you brought me through A, B, and C, so you can handle D. God, I know that you are more than able, so I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't understand how it's going to play out, but you're still God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the King of Kings. You are the first and you're the last. You are my chief cornerstone. I'm just going to raise my hands. I'm going to lift my voice, and I'm going to step out in faith because you are more than able. If there's somebody that believes God can, you need to raise your hands. If there's somebody who believes that God will, you need to lift your voice. If there's somebody that knows, sing this. Yes.
walks with me, tell me I'm his own. Calls all my fears, tell me I am not alone. Play the difference, he made the difference in my life. He gives me joy that cannot be surpassed. I'm on the top, from the first moment to the last. He walks with me, talks with me, tell me I'm his own. He calls all my fears, tell me I am not alone. He plays the difference. haven't found somebody, grab somebody's hand right now. We're going to pray some faith into each other. Grab somebody's hand right now. Come on, find somebody where two or more are gathered. I want you to put your hands on somebody and let's pray for each other. Find somebody and let's pray. Now pray with me. God, I pray right now that you would bless my brothers and sisters. God, we've entered into a place of praise and we moved into worship. Now we're stepping out in faith. God, these things that we've been dealing with, these battles that we've been battling, God, these feelings, these frustrations, these emotions, God, we bring them all to you like never before. God, it is this week that we want to see change. God, is it in this need I need to see a move? God, I pray right now like never before that your divine interruption would move into lives. God, I pray that a Holy Ghost unction would take hold. God, give people wisdom beyond their years. Give them anointing beyond their understanding. God, give us a heart like David. Give us wisdom like Solomon. God, use us for this day, for this hour. Turn each situation into a testament. Turn each struggle into a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. God, let your glory, let your anointing fall. Somebody pray faith into your brother. Somebody pray blessing into your sister. Yes. pray that you would let this word seep into our spirit like never before. God, I pray that we would not leave here today just having a moment of church, but that we would decide that we will be the church in our neighborhood, in our jobs, in our community like never before. God, I pray that the word of faith would go forth, that we would leave here built up, encouraged and strengthened by who you are. God, we are going to be people that are making the right choices at the right time for the right reason. God, you did not bring us to this point to see us fail. God, we are more than conquerors through you. God, we will walk out of here in you and through you and by you. Lord, I pray that you would use our lives as a living testimony. 
God, give us a word, quicken our spirit like never before. Use each and every person in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. Just as a reminder, feel free to greet one another, continue to pray with each other. But just as a reminder for this evening, you're to pray in your assigned section. So if, you're, if you have that, just remember to go pray in your assigned section. We're going to do that instead of meeting at the church. And I'm so thankful my wife no longer has Somerset Mall as her assigned section. Thank God for small blessings. We had that a couple years ago. I was not happy about that assignment, I can tell you that. 